welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. It is week 16 for my classical conversation students and we have a science episode today. We are going to be talking about Newton's first law of motion. We are going to be talking about what it is and then we're going to be talking about some examples um, that we see in our world and even in outer space. So let's go ahead and start doodling. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in motion tends to stay in motion along a straight line unless an outside force acts upon it. This law can also be referred to as the law of inertia. Inertia is defined as a tendency to do nothing or to remain unchanged. So this just means that objects tend to resist change or in other words, they tend to keep on doing what they were doing unless acted upon by something else. So something at rest stays at rest, something moving is going to stay moving in the direction it was. So imagine you are riding in a car and a driver presses on the brakes. The car likes to stay in motion until the outside force, the brakes, act upon it. But as the passenger in the car, you feel yourself move forward just a little bit. And depending on how fast the driver is braking, you may feel yourself slide forward a bit in your seat as well. This happens until the seatbelt that you are wearing acts on your body to stop it from moving forward. This is why it is so very important for you to wear your seatbelt. In a car crash, your seatbelt acts against Newton's first law of motion and stops you from continuing to move forward and keeps you safe. Another example is if you are riding a bicycle or even a skateboard, and if you hit a rock or a curb, your body keeps moving forward. And this is why it is also important to always wear a helmet and perhaps some protective knee or elbow pads just in case. These things help keep you safe from Newton's first law of motion. Similarly, a parked car will stay parked unless something acts upon it too. So to get your car to start moving, your parent has to climb into the car, put the key in the ignition, and start the engine. The engine then does the work and acts upon the car to propel it forward and change it from an object at rest to an object in motion. Here on Earth, we have something called air resistance and friction to take into consideration as well. Friction is defined as the resistance that one surface or object encounters when moving over another. So when you rub your hands together when they're cold, this is friction working to heat up your hands for you. It is resistance between your two hands. Air resistance is a type of friction. It is the air acting upon something traveling in a straight line and the friction slowing the object down. So even if a car does not have any brakes on it, it will eventually slow down because of the air resistance and the friction between the tires and the road acting against it. But keep in mind, this will take quite a bit 
longer than if someone did have brakes on their car. Up in space, if an astronaut is doing a spacewalk and perhaps working on a satellite, but then they accidentally lose control of, say, their screwdriver, and it starts floating out into space, that screwdriver will continue floating on out into space at the same speed and in the same direction forever because there is no outside force, no air resistance or friction acting upon it. The screwdriver doesn't have brakes either to slow itself down. I'm personally very glad we have air resistance, friction, and gravity for that matter here on Earth. If we didn't have those things, it sure would make doing household chores and life in general very difficult. And that is all we have for today. Just a short video learning about Newton's first law of motion. Be sure to tune in next week for the next science and history videos put out by Doodling Through Education. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your week and you enjoy learning more. And on that note, be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.